consider yourself a fisherman? Just how far do you want to take it? Subscribe to this channel for more awesome videos. Yes sir, back on the beach again. I've lost my furry deer stalker hat. I think it was when I was down to fish it one night uh, last week. I must have dropped it out of the car, so I'm having to use this little beanie thing, which I don't like, but I've got to have some heat. Blazing blue sky. I've just spent an hour driving through fog. It's been cold inland, four degrees, three, four degrees. Down here it's 11. It's gonna to drop tonight. I'm gonna to give it a go, just see what I can catch. Bear with me, I'm gonna tackle up and throw out. So first bait, a bit unusual. It's a chunk, a half tail section of barracuda, frozen barracuda, European barracuda, I think it is. Somebody gave me, God knows how old it is, but you can see the meat's a bit white, it's not exactly juicy and dripping with uh, blood. Uh, I've got a pulley panel, two hooks on there. Hopefully, if a big fish comes along, it's gonna get hooked on that. Grip lead there. I don't know what size those blue ones are, it looks about maybe a five. That'll do me because the wind's sort of northeast. It's coming slightly, maybe off that corner. I don't really want the easterly. So I'm just going to get some base in the water. Uh, very, very flat. And uh, just, well, listen, just see if I can catch something. I'm going to clip this one down. Might squeeze an extra couple of yards out there you never know you can live in hope I think I'm going to go sort of for the middle there out to, towards what we call Chimet it's about three hours up the tide so I've got three hours top of the tide and then dropping back so I'm aiming on a walk back technique for this one uh, or a walk up technique <laughs> I don't need to get a booty before I even start. Try again. There she goes! Skabush! Not far, but I can walk that one back. At least it's disengaged, which I don't mind disengaging early. Do you know what? I th actually feel happier seeing it disengage, and then I know at least it's clear. One day I'm going to catch a decent fish with these big baits. The other two are just chuck small hooks out and worm baits. I don't hold out much hope until it gets dark. But as with beach fishing in the south of England, you just never know. Right, I need a small fish rig. Oh, I think the old Wackanoster can go out. It's just basically three, three hooks very close together. And I haven't used this since, uh, I haven't used this since the last trip, so I tried to dry the hooks off, but they might just be a tad rusty there, so just rub them off. And that's the trouble, if you put them back in these bags, even if you wash them off in fresh water, um, if you, once you put them in like a Ziploc thing, sealed up, it's a recipe for uh, recipe for rust. That's a, a good saying there for fishermen. Recipe for rust. So I'm just trying to rub the worst of it off. And they're easy rigs, but they're all close together. I've got some of my own wraps I've made up here. Wouldn't like to say how old they are. They'd be rag of some dubious description. And I might just start with these. I've got some. I've got half a pound of fresh rag. Ragworm, I'm just going to pile. Sometimes you can get flatfish on really, really iffy bait. But these were salted. I salted these down. Live, obviously. Finished from a trip. 
didn't use them all. But sometimes, you know, you can get lucky. And especially, I can tell you now, dabs. Dabs love really manky old worms. Who knows why? I have no way of knowing why, but they do. I just pulled the stop down there. So you can see that's ready to go. The hooks are very close together here. But what I do like is that you can clip them down if you see the little clip there, but they got the swivel, helps them numb tangle, doesn't spin around the main line. You're probably just get, gonna get one cast out of these worms, but if you're gonna throw them away anyway, I figure I might as well salt them and freeze them. And you know, I might catch a fish on them. It's a bonus. And then I've got, just as the sun goes down, I can start using my uh, live ragworm, which should, should, should be better. See, I can just pile all these on. And the salt does seem to, uh, I won't say it toughens, it just holds them together a little bit. And there we go. That there is the rig. It's got to slide those worm stops down a bit. That one's okay, that one's okay. And I'm just going to heave that, throw it out there, and trust to luck. It's like washing, isn't it, really? And lovely and quiet, nobody down here. Peace and quiet, that's what I like. I actually drive away from the car park area. You're hoping for a non-disturbed fishing session. Right, let's get this one out there. Might have been wiser to bring some Wellingtons. I could have gone down and got a little bit extra of space there. So I just got to time the waves. Run down, hurl it, run back, usual procedure. Whee! Splash. I was lucky on this rod last time. I fished down here. Up and down the shingle, up and down the shingle. So this one was what I call shotgun rod. You guys must have seen it if you're regulars. I just put it in the rod holder there, which is a piece of sink waste pipe. If somebody grabs it, great. If it doesn't, whatever, it doesn't matter. annoying I just had a really good bite on the left hand rod on the three hook rig on the frozen worms really pulled down I should have left it but I struck on it didn't feel a thing so I just left it haven't wound in it was that left hand one real good banging bite that's early that could have been a flat fish like a flounder or a dab you can tell how excited I was <laughs> that's when I got the bite Two bites, one on the rod and one on the sandwich. No, he hasn't come back. I think he did come back. So I've, I've just peeled a little bit of slack off there. He could just be laying there. I don't think it's the waves, I really don't. There it is, look. That's in between waves. Gonna be a cold one tonight. I've rigged the old shelter up. I'm sure people will turn up later on. A lot of people think it's actually too flat for fishing. I've come because there is no wind and I live so far away. It's just nice to be out on the beach, peace and quiet this time of year. Northeasterly airflow, just coming slightly off my shoulder there. I'm going to leave that one a bit longer, finish my sandwich, it's either on or it's gone. I'm going to check that bait. Bit 
Feels like nothing now. That feels like a booty. Oh no, it's pulling. That's the undertow. That's nothing. Now, which one was chewed? I think it's that top one that's chewed. Ah, oh, let's get it out of there again. We can but try. See, what I do is I put the knot and don't overlap the, the leader lock there, see? You can see the knot just there. I put the next coil above it a couple of times. That way it doesn't uh, snag up, hopefully. For a flat sea, there's a bit of, a bit of surf running. I'm hoping I don't have to move from where I am. I'm figuring that's about high water mark there. Gonna fish it into the dark and then uh, follow it down after high for a couple of hours at least, depending on the bites. What a setting. I think I'll leave this uh, half a barracuda tail out as long as I can. I put the bag there with stones in it. Just put a loop, put it over the tripod there, just over the nut. In case some big grabs it, it might just pull it out here. And always make sure you get a few stones over the base. Look, I've got the drag set. Fairly light, but I want them, you know, hookable, but not pulling the rod right over. They're okay. To whiz back to the car and get my uh, other camera feel because it's got the floodlight with it. Sun is going down, might get a nice sunset shot there. They're small tides, they're not big tides. You can tell that by the moon up there, just a half moon. So it's sort of halfway between uh, big tides and small tides, what we call neap tides. Not great for fishing, good for boat fishing because you can, uh, you know, out further out to sea, you can uh, have less water moving so you can hold with a lighter lead. It's more pleasurable fishing with a boat and lighter leads. Big surf out there, look over that bar. Big surf. That's strange, obviously in here. I find that unusual. You know, it's normally a sign of a storm, but it is absolutely flat as a witch's, um, you know, one of those, flat. Right, well, just gonna whiz back to the car, literally over the back there before the fish come on, hopefully, hopefully.
choker. It came off just in the backwash, the last surge of the wave. I'm guessing on this one, it's tangled up. Man, that's such bad luck. That's on the manky frozen worms. That was a good fish. Could have been a small bass. I don't like this beanie. Bad luck. Well, at least I better take on those worms. I'm going to whisk them straight back out. Please. I hate losing a fish you don't see. I don't mind if it feels like a white, it definitely wasn't a white, it's banging. I think it's a bass, I think it's a decent bass. I got it right in, the last wave washed it up. It might just give me some slack and then the back wash. I didn't know not to haul it. Held it. Next wave gone. What was I going to say? I'm not a great lover of the moon in the sky and the sun up at the same time. I and mean, I'm not a lover of full moons except for Tune and Marley. But yeah, you can't do anything about it, it's up there. But isn't that strange, as the sunset it went down, I got a really good bite. I'm just hoping, hoping there might be more. Oh, I got it right in close. I think I'll turn it off and have a good cussing session. I'm getting out of my system, so I have a vent. I've got to have a vent. You're venting about this beanie, it's itchy. I don't like beanies. I feel like I'm wearing my mum's, or my grandmum's even, tea cosy. Basically coming into salt now. That's a good fish. Could have been small hooks. I know I wasn't pulling it too hard. Now it's bothering me that cod have got quite a big mouth. It could have just been hanging there and as the wave sucked back, pinged out. I'm not stupid enough when a wave backwash comes to start hauling and hanging on. You let the fish go back and you try and get it in on the wave. It's actually coming in with the wave. Maybe it got a bit of slack and the hook fell out. I don't know, but it's gone. The main thing is, I don't really carry grudges, but I do, but only to the grave. What a son of a... And because now I'm sitting waiting, no bites. A good mind to have a raging great big cook up. Beautiful setting. Here's a bigger one. There's another one behind it as well. I just see it building there. I have to keep an eye on these. Might be having to move back. Cold, cold, cold. Oh, one thing these horrible itchy beanies have is this. I don't know, it must be one of those Christmas present stocking filler things, but it's got its own little light, which is pretty good. I guess it's on a three powers, and that's a low power. That's absolutely fine. Of course I've got my head torch, of course I have. But I've got to keep something to keep the old brain thermal qualities going. I mean, I'm no threat to the pub quiz, put it like that. But I've still got to keep my head warm, keep a little bit of activity going around there. I think, talking of activity, I'm going to put the fresh worms on now because 
other than that first bite and then losing that fish, I've not had anything. So I think now is the time. I've got about an hour and a half to high water. Just as well use them now, otherwise they just get left over, salted, frozen, and pulled back down two years later. Come on, even a whiting will be nice. You gotta be able to see them there. I bought them, so I might just as well use them. Lovely, juicy ragwort. There we go, you can see them better. So the beanie light's actually all right. It's the beanie that's the problem. See the difference in the colour between fresh worms and the old mankies. I'm tempted to pile them on with a great big cod type bait there. Just for that first sort of hour. It's a bit overkill on hook size, but you never know. Have the stock down, let's whack those out. You know, you to see up there, that's the fog bank that's going to come in there, all here. That's what I've got to drive back with tonight because the temperature's just dropped about three degrees. It looks like a cloud, but it's only about a couple of 300 feet high. So it's going to get really cold. I might have enough wood to light a fire. Big temperature drop. And I say it was four degrees inland when I drove down. Got to the coast, it was 11, so this is the four degrees coming to meet me. Lovely. I've had loads of mist, but I'm kind of surprised I'm missing a jumbo white in there. Really nice one. Hope you don't get fish lying all over the lens. So there's a big white in out there. Hopefully it's the turn of the tide. It's a really weird tide. Some big waves come in and then stop. Get this one off. As much as I don't like this itchy beanie, the light's pretty good. One white. Sad but true. And it's some, just some weird waves, you know, they come around the big boom, sweep up and they're sucking the line back. It's, I've never done much good when it's like this, but this has got a white I've had loads of different other bites, but I think black green, I'm not sure. And the baits are getting shredded now, so. I've got some wood with me, I might have a fire to cook up in a minute. I'm just waiting for the tide, it's turned now. I think we've got 20 minutes because some big waves coming in. I don't want to get to a booty or anything washed away. I'm going to move down a little bit. Um, I'm sure the weather's going to change, the wind will pick up with the tide as it so often does. But this little thing's pretty, pretty good. I don't know where it came from. Tad 
he bites. I'm hoping, I'm hoping as you know, I like the ebb tide, I'm hoping it's gonna give me a few more fish. Otherwise it's a very long drive for one whiting. Not to mention the temperature. taken the uh, piece of barracuda meat off and I've, uh, I've got a big prawn on there now. I had some hammering bites on it and it came in half a prawn. A little tip of ragworm on it. The big prawns, they're big uh, giant prawns. King prawns I suppose you call them. I've peeled one so I'm still out there, double hook rig. A whole prawn is about this big, it's a big one. But you know if there's white in there they'll still shred it. I'm amazed I'm not getting more white in, it's weird. Wind's picked up now. It is what it is. I'm here to put, a, put the time in. Well, no more bites. I'm going to have to start moving my gear down um, if I do want to light a fire. The thing is, it's getting really cold. I've got gloves, but it's still getting cold. Circulation thing, age, and all that. What well, good job I'm out of the wind. And it's all moisture on the inside of this. So it's like the fog. It creates moisture in the air, it's all like little particles going through. And uh, it's way up higher now. The other guy's gone, it's about 6.30ish, so it's about half an hour down. What to do, I don't know. I'm on worms and prawn. I could do no more than sit here. I think I'm going to chance moving down and hope there's no big waves. And then uh, I'll see if I can get a little fire going. I might have a cook up and at least thaw out. Still might get lucky on the way down, but it's just, I guess it's the neap tides? I don't know, well it could be the sun and the moon at the same time. Now I think it's small tides, I think it's what it is guys, it's a small tide. Easterly wind, I could blame that, northeasterly. Magic juice. Well, I can't quite have it in the bivvy, but it's quite close. And I'm still not getting bites on those rods. Bizarre, absolutely bizarre. One bite on the left hand rod. Tiny bite, I think. Could be waves. Yeah, I think it's just the waves. Peculiar waves making these sore false bites. Steaming my glasses up so hot now. <laughs>
<laughs> what did I decide to do this one? Hello, so you don't know how to cook outside? This is how you survive. Totally awesome style. One thing you have to be aware of, having a little beach cook up like this, is stones pinging out when it gets really hot. And it does. Normally I wouldn't cook on flames. I'd be cooking on the embers. And politely, I'm saying the word cook. Those of us, those of us who follow all our shows, uh, no, most of the time we sort of burn rather than cook. But you guys don't know what I've got to put in there yet. Probably a good chance it explode into flames. I believe they say it's sweating the onions off. I'm going to go for a cup of soup because it's dry, normally I bring a tin, I far prefer tins. But listen, in the cold and using just a regular billy can, it just stays very, very hot. i just got to remember, the kettle's also very hot. Mushroom soup, I think that is, or vegetable soup, or vegetable mushroom. That's when it's best to cook when it's like this. Level that out a bit. This is what you call a jumbo hot dog. Now, anybody who recognised me having a moustache for 60 years, there is now no moustache. It just ignited. Guys, we need one staying warm. So we're gonna have us a good old fashioned hot dog. Sweet chili sauce. Sort of caramelized onions, salt. That's what you call a big dog. And there we go, people. Yeah, I get it right sometimes. Mm. That is so good. Mushroom soup. I don't care if I only have one whiting. Wow. That sweet chilli sauce does it.
Check it out. This is good. This is better than a doctor. Put it there to keep warm. I don't know if you take a pee on this little shingle there. I just saw it out the corner of my eye. Wowie. Turns into a good trip after all. That was on the pool there, people. Look. Let's get him back. Thought for a minute it might be a cod. Being a big bait. Oh. It don't get no better than that. Well, it does, Bass. A melting the fishing rod, and B, wait for this, catching some nice whites in now. Well, E, ebb tide again, always fancy the ebb tide. And I've got a bite on the, literally for the last pool. Just get this guy back, but he's glad to see the back of that frying pan. Big waves are gone, guys. Um, and more white here. So, good trip. All comes good. Everything comes to those who wait. That's what they tell me. I've certainly waited. Wow. I hope I did eat that hot dog and not a bit of that old prawn bait that's been out fishing about six times. Let's get this guy back. Yes. All coming good in the end, people. All coming good. And they're not halfway bad sized white, are they? I don't really want it flicking all over the lens. Good job I've had those two uh, jumbo hot dogs. Otherwise, he might be sizable on his way to the pan. Good little session. Yes. Yes. Let's go for the full set. It's only a small one, but it is indeed, yes, the right species. I mean, goodness me, that turned around that trip, didn't it? And all because of those giant hot dogs. Dogfish, quite a few right in now. He's even got his fin up for you, this guy. Ragworm, hammering bite. I'm going to hang on, it's only caught by a stake, there's not a person down here. I don't understand it. Wow, I wonder if there's a bigger bass out there. Wow. 
you know what they say, it's better to be lucky than skillful. Unfortunately I'm just burdened with both and good looking as well. Oh, way to go boys, the last cast, last worms on this rod, wait for this, it's a double whammy. Small smooth hound and a whiting, I mean, can't do any more and catch them two at a time. Basically it hit the seabed, I put in the rest and they just whacked over, both are jaw hooked. The little smoothie here, as you can see. What is it with this tide business? I just cannot understand it at all. There's so many fish out there now. Well guys, I'm going to call it quits, the wind's come up. I've caught a couple more white, you can't film them. The whole camera, everything fell into the sand, so I've got grit all around here. So I, I just had to try to blow it off as the best I could do. And the beanie is driving me up the wall. Right then, I just text the wife and uh, tell her I'm going to call it quits and she's going to try and find me a proper deer stalker hat like the one. I've dropped it somewhere, maybe he's hand fishing at night. He's falling out the car and I put it back in, it's not just live. No, I think we're done. Guys, thanks for watching Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I hope you enjoyed this one. I've had a real ball, especially cooking. I like the fire, really good. Burn everything as usual, does it matter? Not really, that's part of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you next time, hopefully. Okay, as lucky as this one. But listen, I'm looking up and down about three miles of beach. There ain't one light on it, I'm the only person here. Last man standing again. Always wait for their last one. See you next time. Here he comes. Missed. I suppose you better hang on. Oh, 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 middle rod. I'm stuck, I've got the camera stuck, guys. I don't know if the fish is still on or not. Oh no, the camera's jammed. <laughs> it's stuck on a typo. That was hammering. I got it. Think I'm on. Fish air. Look at that tripod there. Ooh. Boys, that one is an eater. I've got to put him back. There's no more space in my stomach after filling out with those giant jumbo hot dogs. That is a real nice whiting. I've got a feeling that's whiting of the trip. And they're still going. I think I'll have one more throw with these washed out worms. Jaw hook, you can go back. 